Welcome to Jurassic Park. Okay, it was probably a cheap shot to open with that little video clip, but it never gets old. It's just too funny. So, No Man's Sky, a little bit controversial. Well, I mean, you could say it's a lot controversial, but it seems recently everyone's forgotten about the controversy because No Man's Sky has been getting a, a few updates. This now being a major one, update 1.3 which has been given the name Atlas Rises. Well, I'm gonna go through a little bit of what the update is, what I think, and whether it's actually worth revisiting No Man's Sky. So the first major thing really that's worth pointing out is that it's bringing a new, a brand new, and overhauled central storyline. There's gonna be some portals that look just a little bit too similar to the Stargate portals. I guess there's only so much sci-fi stuff you can do around portals before they start to look quite similar. So you have to point and go, hey, that looks like something out of Stargate, because it's probably the most famous portal in, uh, in film history, really, now, I would suggest. There's also going to be some minor improvements to things like trade, but there's going to be full system economies, which could be interesting. Uh, a procedural mission system, which sounds like it would be horrible, but I've actually had a little go... And yeah, it actually is pretty horrible. It's very generic fetch and carry quests, at least at the lower levels. Um, I haven't put a ton of time into it, so maybe there's some more interesting ones, or maybe I'm just getting all the rubbish ones. But it was pretty bland and didn't really feel as though there was a point to it. It didn't feel particularly organic either, so that was a bit of a disappointment. But at least it gives you something to do in the No Man's Sky universe, because it is a big universe after all. And one of the main complaints, really, from basically everyone, was that there was not really a lot to do in No Man's Sky. It kind of gave you a big sandbox and said, hey, go have fun, and it was like a case of... Uh, what, what, what do I do now? Okay, I've been to about 10 or 15 planets. They're all pretty similar. Even the more unique ones are still pretty similar. It's still a planet, you land on it, and you do the same thing on each planet every time you land on a planet, and there was not really anything particularly interesting going on. But something, when it was leaked at least, that definitely raised a few eyebrows and got people really excited was something they were calling joint exploration. And suddenly people were like, huh? Multiplayer? Multiplayer? That sounds a lot like multiplayer. Is this multiplayer? I must have the multiplayer. Well, yes and no. It's, personally, I'm going to say it's not multiplayer because it isn't. I mean, we do all, well, I mean, I should hope now, we still all remember some of the things that Sean Murray said about how there was, you know, absolutely going to be multiplayer, but you'll be really, 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 really struggling to meet anyone because it's so big and there's so many planets and the universe is so huge that you'll never see anyone. Um, it's definitely going to be a lot trickier when you don't fucking code it into the game and it doesn't exist because there was no such thing as multiplayer. Never was. It's such a bold idea. I mean, you guys are literally building your own, like, massively multiplayer world that's right. procedurally generated. And uh, are there, is there anything that this game doesn't have? <laughs> Do we ever get to see ourselves? Uh, no. You don't see yourself, so the only way for you to know what you look like is for somebody else to, you know, to see you. Can you run into other people, other players on the game? Yes, but the chances of that are incredibly rare, just because of the size of what we're building. Wow. How much uh, interaction is there with other people playing No Man's Sky? Those uh, were AI, yeah. those wingmen, um, but you could encounter other players. The reality is the likelihood of that is tiny, basically. Will you be able to play with your friends? Yeah. Can you grief other players? <laughs> A little bit. Yes, yeah, some of us have forgotten that really quickly because of this little update. And while I don't want the video to be a whole bash against the game, I am still feeling the hurt from being lied to by Sean Murray. Because let's face it, I mean, we could all probably agree, at least I should hope, even, even massive No Man's Sky fans, there are some, that Sean Murray lied. He lied a lot, he lied straight to our faces, he lied to other people's faces, TV shows, you name it. He lied a lot. 
And no one at Sony or Hello Games could be asked to rein him in and say he's speaking a, he's exaggerating a little bit. No, no one could be asked at all. And so why should we be asked to forget about it? Because I certainly haven't. But anyway, before I go into a rant about No Man's Sky, let's cover some of the other things. So the new story they're touting to be about 30 hours of content, saying that it's double uh, the narrative story of No Man's Sky, which I don't really think there was really a story, was there? Apart from something that kind of directed you to the center of the universe where the game ended and gave you a new universe. There was no actual ending to the game. So can we really say there was a story? I, I don't really think you can, but this is supposed to be an actual new, fully scripted and written story. I haven't started it yet because I was trying to, you know, cover all the actual other features in the game and see what they were like for myself. I haven't actually delved into that story very much beyond what you get at the beginning, which is just, you know, a wall of text and stuff. It's not, while there is a story, it's a lot of reading rather than actually anything particular involving. But apparently you're going to be discovering the truth about the abandoned building logs, the world of glass, the sentinels, the redemption of the Gek, and the meaning of 16. After waking Titan, Atlas rises, is how that sentence ends, and it's highlighted like it means something. For me, it doesn't really, doesn't mean anything. So, some of the more minor features is the fact they've kind of overhauled the galactic map. They've made it easier to sort out your waypoints and navigation, so you can keep up with what you're doing, where you're doing it. And so each system's going to have a wealth, economy, and conflict level, so you know what's going on, whether it's dangerous, who's in charge of that particular system. We've also overhauled some of the more central uh, planets, had an overhaul of the planetary biomes, and there seems to be an overall graphical change to the game as well. It's still, it's still a No Man's Sky we saw at the beginning, more or less, but they've increased the fidelity a little bit more. Everything's a bit more sharper, a bit clearer. Uh, some things, I think the textures, at least comparing old footage, the textures have been improved a little bit. So it's still got that same sort of simplistic but busy aesthetic. There's there's a lot of things going on in terms of plants and life form and stones, rocks, you know, trees, all that kind of good stuff. But nothing major, but just something that's, that's nice. You know, it's good to have that added in. And finally, something that was conspicuously missing from the launch day but was advertised and told as it was a thing that we could do at launch day, crashed freighters. Yes, now you can finally discover and scavenge lost cargo from giant crashed freighters on the planetary surfaces. Uh, some of the things are going to be buried, so you can use the terrain manipulator to excavate those, and you can complete salvage missions for guild rewards. So, uh, more missions, that's good, right? More things to do. Is it going to really keep core players or bring old players or new players to the game? I, I don't think so. I, the problem with the procedurally generated missions is I don't think it's going to be as interesting as something that's handcrafted. I said this about the game before it came out, uh, about the whole 15 quintillion planets to go look at. It's not going to be as interesting when the computer's deciding what's going to be there. It's not as interesting having certain structures and stuff that are all identical dotted around on, on a planet and then the exact same ones are dotted around on the next planet and so on and so forth. It's not it's not the same as something that's more handcrafted like something like Skyrim where you can go for a, a wander off the beaten road and find something, you know, that's not even on the map, something completely unintentionally you happen across and it's interesting, it's exciting when you find something like that. There's not really any of that in No Man's Sky. There's at least a variety of missions but again it's just it's so many different things it can be so there's going to be a lot of repetition you can have missions where it's go here scan something come back or go there find something trade it back at the station where it, the mission was given um find something just a gen generic exploration mission and also some combat missions in, in space and whatnot but again it does sound overly generic and the missions that i particularly got at the beginning when i had a look at it it was just pretty much fetch and carry quests, and it just wasn't particularly interesting. There was nothing really... The, the, the reward factor wasn't particularly interesting, or the mission itself. 
But it allows you to build standing with numerous NPC guilds and characters. So I suppose there's a reason to do it, but the want to do it is not actually there because it's, it's not interesting enough. That's the main problem with the game entirely. I would suggest that it's just not interesting enough. There's not the draw there. I mean, some people will disagree and they'll say it's interesting enough to do it, but I don't think most gamers are really going to be interested if there's nothing exciting about what they're doing. On the other minor side of things that have been added, added tweaked or changed, the analysis visor, well, that's been completely redone to be a bit more interesting, gives you more information, uh, tells you more about the things you've discovered, and the rewards are a little bit better now as well, so it's not boring. Uh, well, <laughs> now I've said that, it's a little bit less boring because you actually get some information rather than just find something, get to name it. There's a little bit more information there, so I guess it makes it slightly more interesting. And the rewards are better, so there's a bit more of a reason to actually do it. And you can upgrade it again, so you can further improve its effectiveness. Uh, I presume that also means range and stuff, so you don't have to get so close to things, perhaps. Uh, not actually fully tried that myself, but that's what I'm reading on this webpage. Now, some of you are probably also interested in something I mentioned earlier, which was terrain editing being able to manipulate the world around you. Well, that's actually pretty good. It works a lot like Subnautica, where your weapon is changed into a harvesting and, well, taken away device. There's probably a technical term for it. But yeah, there's like an excavator and a placer, I guess you would call it. So you can design your own things, draw massive pretzels, massive dicks, which I know a lot of people are probably going to do. But yeah, being able to build your base with the 1.2 update and then redesign the terrain around it or vice versa like designing your own cave and then building a base inside that perhaps uh, the possibilities are expanded quite a lot now the portals um before i'd actually read about this i was making a joke to well myself actually because i was thinking about it when i saw the picture of the portal and it looked so much like a stargate portal i thought i wonder if it comes of its own dhd the dial home device because i'm a massive stargate fan and i know a shit ton about stargate one of my favorite tv shows ever even the more recent ones which were as well received like stargate universe but before i go off into a tangent the dial home device dhd there actually is one in no man's sky um now the whole portal thing you could say well it's sci-fi there's going to be a few similarities but also including the dial home device is a thing it's, it couldn't be much more like Stargate if it tried. You know, if Colonel O'Neill jumped out of it before I went through it, I would not be surprised. Again, I suppose there's only so many sci-fi tropes you can have without them being too dissimilar. But it does, when you first see it, look so similar that it's more like if you've got a unique idea, Hello Games, if you've got something that's, you know, your own idea rather than it does feel a lot like copying. But another good feature that I'm happy to see is a low flight mode. Now, most of you are probably quite aware who have played No Man's Sky or have at least seen it, is you could only fly your craft to maybe 100 meters off the ground and then you sort of hit an invisible bubble of, nope, you can't go any lower than this. So you couldn't get very low to the terrain at all to see what was going on. Now, you can go all the way down and even crash if you, if you so choose to or happen to make a mistake, which means you'll be left leaving a broken ship or repairing the one that you crashed. You don't seem to explode in a fireball and then get a big pop-up that says wasted. You just actually crash and you can just repair it. So that's pretty good and means you can have some dog fighting on the planet below. Maybe weaving out some canyons, reenact some of your favourite Star Wars scenes. It's a good addition, but it's something it's such a no-brainer that it should have always been there from the start. Like most of these features, it does feel right now that No Man's Sky would have been not good, but it's so close to being an early access game without the name that it could just be an early access game and started adding these features as it went, rather than promising all these features, coming out as a bare bones structure, and then gradually adding them over the course of a year. It does feel as though this may as well have been an early access game. I, I don't see why it couldn't have been. People have probably still bought it. It would probably have still done probably not as well as it did, but maybe at least half what it did. It does it feels so bizarre for a triple A game at full price to have come out so bare bones and then gradually getting the things that were promised to be a thing at launch. 
Again, guys, I haven't forgotten. Some people have. There's even people like Total Biscuit and stuff saying, why would people still be complaining when it's getting free stuff added to it? And I can see where you're coming from. But at the same time, a lot of us paid $60, 40 odd pounds for this game that was supposed to have all these features in the fucking beginning. Not a year later or half a year later. We were lied to, we were sold a lie. I'm gonna go on a rant now, aren't I? <laughs> we were sold a lie. And as glad as I am that there's still some free updates coming out, it's stuff that we were promised in the beginning. You can't just say, oh, my game comes out next week, guys. It's uh, it's like DayZ, but it works. It's full of zombies, lots of guns and whatnot. And then it comes out and it's a guy and one big field. <laughs> there's no zombies or guns or anything. You can't... The, the fact they got investigated for false advertising back a while back, I thought they would actually get busted for it because it was a fully scripted trailer with a lot of scripted moments. It couldn't have been any more scripted. And it was a thing that Sean Murray said would be a lie to have anything scripted. And then they did it with a fucking trailer. But anyway, let's carry on dissecting the update. I will try not to rant. So the bit about joint exploration, the bit that's going to annoy me and it's going to send me off into a rant again. Glitches in the simulation have begun to appear. Visualized by strange floating orbs, up to 16 players can see and communicate with one another and explore the universe together. Yeah, that's that's kind of multiplayer, but not quite. The whole multiplayer aspect of No Man's Sky, when it was first being discussed, Sean Murray often did say that he was... Well, when he wasn't saying players could meet up and fully interact with each other, he was saying, oh, it's going to be something like Dark Souls, where you'll, you'll sort of know someone's been there or see someone uh, as if they were there, but they're not really, and all that kind of stuff. This seems like a step in the right direction for multiplayer but saying that this is multiplayer it's not as people are literally just a floating orb something like a uh, little fairy off link is kind of what of, of uh, legend of zelda when you're playing as link it's just an orb and sure you might be able to talk to each other and go around and do stuff but it's not got the same level of involvement as some actual player characters where you can talk and hang around with and do stuff with it's just it's just weird it's just like spirits don't like it. But again, a step in the right direction. Maybe we'll actually get proper multiplayer at some point. And then maybe we'll be able to have some of the more interesting things like building bases together. Maybe having some form of PvP, if not just PvE. I don't know. I don't know whether No Man's Sky really needs PvP, but it definitely needs proper player interaction, at least. Not fucking floating spirit people. Yeah, the other minor things is they've added a few new ships, one of which, at least on these pictures, looks like a squid. Quite quite interesting looking, that one. The other one looks just like any generic ship that already features in the game. In fact, it's not it's not too dissimilar to one of the first ones you uh, get to see when you land on your first space station, so that's a bit of a disappointment. And then there's a little extra section about quality of life. Which basically boils down to a lot of min minuscule features, a lot of miscellaneous features that are going to help make things a little less clunky. Because the inventory system and basically just every menu in the game used to be really clunky. And it still kind of is, but at least now there's specific tabs to be clunky with. So you can be able to summon your ship a little bit easier and specific technology and cargo inventories have been added to improve the overall management. It still feels a bit clunky, but it's definitely better than it was. There's a whole list of patch notes that I'm not going to go through because this video is already going to be over the 15 minute mark. But basically, a lot of fixes, balances, tweaks to ship so you can have space combat a little bit more fluidly and slightly less restricted than it was before. Lots and lots of minor things, and I recommend reading that yourself if you're that interested, because that is a lot to go through. <laughs> I don't want to just stream off a list of updated the galactic map UI, improved galactic map controls, improved star names, gathered in the galaxy map fly through, improved. Yeah, I don't want to go through all that. But anyway, guys, if you found the video good and interesting and whatnot, please leave a like and consider subscribing if you found your way here from out there on the interwebs. I'm a very small YouTube channel, but I do try very, very hard. I try to have an upload schedule of at least one video every two days. I have a real life job, which doesn't pay me very much. And YouTube at this point is still just kind of a thing that I do at the moment, at least for the foreseeable future. But I would appreciate having you guys stick around. So again, yes, please 
like, subscribe, follow, stalk me, and stuff. And I'll see you guys in another video real soon.